inside Downing Street, uh, if we can in a moment. Yes, I was just about to say that uh, Day one of the state visit, well, the controversy began even before Air Force One had touched down at Stansted uh, Airport yesterday morning with Donald Trump uh, tweeting in very personal terms at times about the mayor of London, uh, Sadiq Khan. And Sadiq Khan joins me now. Thank you very much for your time today joining us on the BBC News Channel. Um, first of all, uh, I just wonder what your thoughts were if you had the opportunity, I don't know if you did, to see those images of the red carpet being rolled out on the steps of Downing Street and Donald Trump arriving there because I know that although you don't object to him being here, you do object to this being a state visit. Well, I think it's really important that we have good relations with the USA and that includes the uh, president. They're our closest ally and we have with them a special relationship. But my objection is for him to receive a state visit, a state banquet and all that it entails. So I think we've got to be very careful about not giving the impression that we condone some of the things that he's said and done over the last uh, two, three years, from separating children from their parents on the Mexican border uh, to uh, using racist, uh, derogatory and offensive language to walking away from the Paris climate change uh, agreement uh, to rolling back the progress made on uh, LGBT plus rights or rolling back the reproductive rights of uh, women. And I, and I think also I'm worried about the, uh, f the fact that the far-right movement around the world sees Donald Trump as their poster boy in, Austri in Aust countries like Hungary, uh, France, uh, Italy, and even this, this, this country. Uh, views that were on the fringes, uh, far-right extreme views, are now being normalized because they've been given sucker by Donald Trump. You, of course, as well, have been attacked on social media for referring to, to Donald Trump in these terms. I mean, do, do you think it's useful to take him on in these spats, if I can call them that, between you on social media? Is that a way, the best way, the most effective way of getting your message across, do you think, and your opposition uh, to what he stands for? Well, I, I'm a bit surprised that the president of the USA would, frankly speaking, behave like an 11-year-old and resort to name-calling. If he wants to have a discussion, and I'd welcome a discussion, about some of the issues that we disagree about, we should do so. I think it's important for our prime minister, by the way, not to do a Hugh Grant Love Actually moment, but actually to express to him her concerns in relation to some of the things that he's said and done that are the complete opposite of what we, you know, having, have always had in common. So we've always had in common religious freedom. We've always had in common equality. And this of all weeks, when we commemorate the D-Day landings, uh, the sacrifices made by brave men and women from the UK, the USA, you know, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, other, other allies, uh, which was about, you know, these religious freedoms and equality, we should be remembering these were hard-fought rights. And I do worry that you've got the uh, leader of America who's seen as a poster boy for far-right movements across the globe. Uh, there's been the suggestion that in this latest encounter between the two, if you're on Twitter, that, that, that you were the one who started it. How do you respond to that? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Sorry. Uh, yes, let me repeat that for you. The, there's been suggestions that uh, in this latest encounter on Twitter between yourself and the president that you were the one who started it. How do you respond to that? Well, look, this all began uh, when Donald Trump was running to become the president. And he said he wanted to ban all Muslims from going to the USA. But he'd make an exception for me as the mayor of London. And I, in a courteous manner, explained to Donald Trump, there's nothing exceptional about me. I think your policy to ban all Muslims from the USA is a bad policy. I know many Americans who are proud Americans, but also proud Muslims, but also Muslims around the world who love America, want to go there to study, on a holiday, to invest, to work there. And this policy sends the wrong message, gives the impression that Islam is incompatible with the West. And that led to name calling from Donald Trump and him saying various beastly things, which doesn't really matter. The point I'm making is a far more serious point. It's not about name calling, but it's saying one of the things about having a special relationship is it's akin to having a best friend. And the thing about a best friend is that expectations and standards are higher than they are from a normal friend 
or a normal acquaintance and some of the things our best friend is saying and doing we disagree with. By the way, that's not saying we stop loving America, we should stop having a special relationship, but we disagree with some of the things Donald Trump is saying. And if you can't be honest and candid with our best friend, they're not really a best friend. Do you regret, though, in any sense, saying that Donald Trump was akin to a, a 20th century fascist, which is the phrase that many people have objected to? When you look at the far-right playbook that's being used around the world now, that, by the way, Donald Trump's former campaign manager is teaching uh, fringe groups to do to become mainstream. You go to Hungary, you go to Italy, you go to France, you go to this country. Many of these far-right groups are now mainstream because Donald Trump's given them sucker. And history tells us that actually what these people do is they try and divide communities, they pick on minority communities, they pick on marginalized communities, they scapegoat them, and they stoke up fears. And I think they should be called out. And one of the jobs I have as the mayor of London, the greatest city in the world, where we see diversity as a strength, is to stand up for our values. And when our best friend, who we love, uh, their leader is saying things we disagree with, say to them, listen, we think you're wrong, and we think you should realize that actually you're giving sucker and comfort and mainstreaming these fringe views. Uh, you're obviously accustomed to the rough and tumble of, of polit politics, political life, but were you on a personal level offended by the comments that President Trump made in those tweets first thing yesterday morning? I've got to be honest, I was working. Uh, and later on I was told uh, that he'd sent this uh, tweet and first thought it was a joke, uh, uh, sort of thing that an 11-year-old would uh, do, but look, it's not for me to you know, respond in, in a like manner. I think, you know, as politicians, we're used to debate. Uh, sometimes it's heated, sometimes we'll uh, disagree, but, but <laughs> name-calling is, I think, beneath me, and uh, you know, I'd hope it's be, be beneath any world leader. Uh, we uh, heard uh, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, who is speaking at the protests in Trafalgar Square today, say that it was an opportunity for people to protest uh, on a number of levels against President Trump, uh, including because of what he said about you yesterday. Yet. Do you think it's right that the Labour leader should be so publicly uh, involved in these protests today when, you know, for example, I believe he attended the state banquet for the Chinese leader? Well, I think, I think Jeremy Corbyn could do a really good job speaking for himself. But what I want to say is this. The expectations we have from our closest ally uh, uh, and our best friend are different from the expectations we have from China. We expect more from our closest uh, ally. And it's really important that we make sure we make clear the concerns we have. I think what you'll see uh, today, I suspect, is people not just from London, but from across the country expressing concern uh, that the leader of uh, the country, who are our closest allies, should have these uh, views. That doesn't detract from the fact that we love America, we love Americans. Many of us revere some of the things the Founding Fathers uh, said from Jefferson to Washington to Lincoln. We love contemporary presidents uh, from Roosevelt to Kennedy to Clinton to Obama. And we're just disappointed that the current president says the things he does and uh, holds the views he does, but also does the things he does. I think we face a climate emergency. So walking away from the Paris Climate Change Accord is a bad idea. I think the reality is uh, around the world we're seeing women's rights being uh, sacrificed. That's why it's important for those of us who are seen as beacons for gender equality should continue to make progress. My frustration has been the lack of progress. I never expect to see in my lifetime the progress made with uh, women's rights being uh, rolled back as they have been in some states in America. It's now illegal now to have almost any abortion in some states uh, in America. I think it's really important that we stand up for uh, those rights that are, that, that are cherished by people in this country but also in America as well. But do you have any misgivings about the uh, the Trump baby balloon being afloat again on the streets of London as part of uh, these protests today, given that tomorrow the president is going to be representing the United States of America in Portsmouth uh, at those D-Day 75 commemorations? Because we're talking here not about an individual holding an office at any one time, but you know the office itself and the symbolism of that office and the relationship with the UK, a history of of shared sacrifice and service? Well, the, the choice, it's not my balloon, by the way. The, uh, the, uh, of course, we've got responsibility to make sure. You, you uh, haven't objected goes, to it, uh, clearly, yes. 
Yeah, but, but, it's, but it's, on, on what grounds would you stop a balloon poking fun at uh, a leader being not raised? As long as it's peaceful, lawful, and uh, civil. I grew up watching Spitting Image, where politicians, British and American, were often ridiculed uh, on a Sunday night, and it's satire. Uh, the key thing is to make sure it's lawful, peaceful, and uh, safe. And actually, by the way, these commemorations are really important. The 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings. One of the things Allies fought for. One of the things Allies fought for was the, the right to protest, the freedom of uh, expression. And sometimes that includes poking fun at leaders, me included. And just a final brief question for you, Mr. Khan, if I may. Uh, you know, if Donald Trump is re-elected uh, as president, and obviously politics is in a state of flux here, if there was a Labour government, would you have serious concerns then about the UK-US relationship in that scenario? Well, uh, let's wait and see what happens. I don't speak for the Labour Party nationally. I'm quite clear we should have very good relations with the uh, USA. I know we work closely with them on a whole host of issues in relation to security matters, but also I see the benefits uh, to us in relation to culture, in relation to jobs, in relation to the bilateral links uh, we have. This summer we'll be seeing great American sports coming to London with Major League uh, Baseball. What I think shouldn't have happened was the state visit, uh, state banquet and all that that entails. So I'm looking forward to a Labour government working closely with a US government, even if Donald Trump's still the president. Okay, Sadiq Khan, Mayor of London, thank you very much for your time today. And